just from your own intuition, what do you feel about the pyramids? It's like a conductor. Yes, conductor. Where a would portal. you put a conductor, a portal? Mm. Where would you put that? Sacred place. Yeah, a sacred place, a ley line, a place of high energy, right? And, you know, when we look at the Egyptians, they built these massive um, pyramids and they buried themselves there. Why? Why would you bury yourself? And they put a crystal at the top and they had all these elaborate, you know, things and they put all their precious items in there, gemstones and crystals and mazes. And, you know, they would put their dead there because those were like rocket ships out of the galaxy. That's what they used the pyramids for, so that they could jettison out of this earth into the galaxies in their afterlife. And so the, what we say about the pyramids is that the pyramids are all over the world. And in fact, actually, the biggest pyramids are in not Egypt, but China. Mm-hmm. We see them all over South America. We see them everywhere. Here in North America, we have something equivalent to pyramids, but we call them mounds, the serpent mounds, the mounds. And most of our mounds, unfortunately, have been destroyed, and we're, we've got highways on them now. So every time we're mm-hmm. passing certain highways, we're, we're connecting to the dead. <laughs> and that's really what the skulls and the pyramids and all that is, is because it's a transference of energy from the living to the, to, you know, the afterlife. Because in all the depictions of what happens after this life, there is an afterlife. And the afterlife really doesn't have anything um, to do with, um, you know, the gates of heaven and all that stuff in the old ways, the afterlife is determined on your soul and how you lived on this earth and where you will go next and the journey that you take. Because we know from physics that energy is not destroyed. It is only transmuted. It's only transformed. You can never, you know, kill energy. So when we die, we go somewhere. We go into an afterlife. But our ancestors always talked about what you did in this life determines what you do in your next life and where you go and your soul contract and all that stuff. And so really the ceremonial work for the rest of this shift and from now until like equinox, I'm going to be focusing more on your human intelligence and your mind and developing your intuition because I don't know if you've noticed, but out there, there's a lot of blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Anybody notice that? There's mm-hmm. a lot of talking. There's a lot of opinions. There's a lot of anger. There's a lot of grief. There's a lot of bleh. <laughs> and so you have to have a really sharp intuition to navigate your life at this point. And you have to be able to be strong and courageous and like a warrior in this time so that you can be in the right place at the right time using your human intelligence. And in alchemy, we always say the first law of alchemy is the mind. All is mind. And you don't wanna get wrapped up in the negativity and the fear of what's happening now because change is not easy. And we are going through probably the biggest change of our life because we have no idea yet what really is happening and what is about to happen. And so we have to be really sharp with intuition to navigate the shift and not get spiraled into um, all that is happening in the world. Because otherwise, you know, you'll be like, like a rabbit, like, oh, you know, fear. And you all came here to be part of this shift, to be part of this awakening, to be uh, a light keeper in this time, and to also um, do do the, the real work of the ancestors. And the ancestors are more accessible now than ever because of the 5G technology. 